Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's Choose the Right chapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Steve, you know Kelly Ripa? Oh, yes. Uh, she, of course, uh, does that show with uh, Ryan Seacrest. Used to do it with Regis. And she do it with, with Hoda, too. Oh, does she? I don't know. I don't, oh, no, Kathy Lee. That's, yeah, that's Kathy just Lee. Kathy Lee. She's got drunk in the last Kelly, hour of the Today Show. Yeah. Kelly Ripa is the new <laughs> Kathy Lee. Yes. Okay, when Kathy Lee left, Kelly Ripa took her place on the uh, Regis and Kelly whatever the hell show. Now it's Kelly and Brian. <laughs> Kelly and whomever. Yeah. And uh, Kelly's got a husband, Mark Consuelos, and he guest hosted with her yesterday on her show. And they talked about how their daughter, Lola, walked in on them being romantic over the weekend on her birthday. So she opens the door, and we're like, all right, you close the door. You know, we both say, no, I no, I'm you being doing? resuscitated. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, it's a lie, it's my birthday. She's like, you, she shuts the door, and you hear, you just ruined my birthday. Hey. And my life, and I used to see in color, and now everything is gray. <laughs> And now we're having brunch. We're eating. We're like, this is delicious. That's delicious. And she's like this. She goes, you're disgusting. (laughs) I guess her daughter just turned 18. Oh, That's a tough 18th birthday. 18 years old walking in. Oh, I think see, the older the older you get, the worse it is. I think. Yeah, and you can't walk into a you you really can't be doing that at 18. I was gonna say, don't you know how to knock? Or yeah. even them. Don't you know how to lock the door? Well, yeah, I, but, but I'm guilty of that. I, I did, you know, you just assume that the kids aren't going to walk in without oh, knocking. And, yeah. But yeah, you got to lock doors. Nope. Yeah, I mean, I guess she says she knocked on the door, and then Kelly says she doesn't think she heard the knocking. But oh. I mean, maybe she was too busy. Well, she's uh, getting knocked. Yeah. yeah. Getting rocked. Yeah. yeah. When you're knocking boots, you don't hear the knock. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's, yeah. Boy. Wow. Yeah. That's happened to you, right? Happy, with, yes, with Sarah. Did. Yeah. Has think, it happened with you and Joe? I think with both kids. Yeah. Oh. Oh, it hasn't happened with, I don't remember if I've ever heard the story of Joe. I know. Oh. I, remember, I remember Sarah's story. We've heard the story. We have. Joe, yeah. come in here. No, he's, we he, have heard Joe, the story. Joe's making him look I like he's remember. never. Uh, Danny, do you remember the story? Oh. I don't remember the story. I don't remember. You guys were all jerks, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the story's happened. Okay. I don't remember this story. Well, yeah, the story's really happened. Don't. We haven't heard about it. Oh, you know, it's... Joey D's Nuts. Oh, really? Do we have to use that name? <laughs> well, that's, that's his name after all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, oh, man, it was so awkward. Well, was, how old were you? I was... Oh, man, I couldn't have been more than 12. Oh, uh, see, that's two years. You're old enough to know stuff at that point. And, well, it was weird because it was a normal day, but I was going to sleep maybe 11 o'clock, and I just keep hearing the door, like, bang. Like, cause it's like a little off its hinge, and so every time I, I kept hearing, just like, gush, gush. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? No, no. Dad's plowing mom. I get up, I walk oh, around, Steve. I can't figure out. Next thing I know, I hear their door move, and I'm like, oh, it's their door. I bet they have the the window or something open. It's and it's I can't sleep, so I gotta go in there. So I knock, nothing happens. For some reason, the stupid kid in me was like, I'll just open the door. Right. Yeah. But well, you were just hoping to repair it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And lo and behold, yeah. the look on their faces. Yeah. Who's, who did you make eye contact with? Mom. Oh, oh so awkward. Oh. And of course, I'm just like, ah, I should just go back to bed. What was I thinking? How old were you again? 12. 12. Oh. Yeah. They didn't even say anything. They tried to play it off like, oh, he... Had no idea. He didn't see anything. He closed the door so fast. I bet he had no idea what was going Mom's on. Just practicing CPR on your father. <laughs> yeah. Ew. So breakfast the next morning, right? I'm getting up. Please tell me they were serving sausage. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I just get up and my mom has this look on her face, and I'm like, "Hey, how's it going? You know, I'm going to head off to school now." And she's like, "Yeah, I made you some lunch." Um. 
And did you sleep well last night? (laughs) (laughs) Awkward. I was like, like, just don't bring it up, honey. Don't bring it up. I looked and I went, no, I did not sleep so well last night. But I bet you did. I bet you were fine, huh? She didn't take that joke very well. (laughs) Jeez. I was actually thinking about it recently. Mm. I've never caught my parents, but I know when I was a kid, like I'd go to open their door and it was locked. They're like, oh, no, 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 we're changing. And I always totally thought they were changing until a couple days ago it hit me. I'm like, they weren't changing. They weren't changing. Yeah. It just, no. just kind of hit me like a wave. I'm like, oh, crap. And but they I'm, were smart. They locked the damn door. Every time. Yeah, you guys didn't even lock the door. That's because we're stupid. No. There's no other way to put it. I mean, you know, when you had the opportunity, sometimes you don't think about those things. See, the scary, here's why I don't like the, 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 the this is how I am, though. I don't like to have a locked door because then the kids can't get in and help if something happens. But like if you like broke your hip in the middle of the. Oh, yeah, or anything. I mean, yeah, I know. It's just like locked doors and I'm like, can they figure out how to get in? No. Uh, they, they did. So it's all. Oh, but there's I, someone else in the room that could open the door. Well, unless we both of them tap both, both break of your us. hip. Yeah, we oh, both geez. break our hips. Then who's going to save us? That's Great. just the way you go. Yeah. And because of that, I'm scarred for life. Sorry about that. Places I walked in on my dad and my stepmom when I was 10. My stepmom returned a favor, walked in on me when I was 16. Oh. oh what would wow. you rather? Walking in on mom and dad getting romantic or mom or dad walking walking in on you getting romantic. <sighs> That's really tough. That's very tough. Because one, I have to get out of my mind. And the other one is just me embarrassed. I got to go with me being embarrassed, I think, instead. Yeah. Yeah, because that way, you know, I'm like, it's not really me to blame. Like, they should have knocked on the door or something. Mm. The other way around, you know, it's mostly their fault, and I just feel scarred. See, I've never had that happen, but I mean, I've had grandma walk in on me being romantic oh, that's with myself. Worse. <laughs> See, that's the worst one. What yes. would you rather have? <laughs> Anything but that. Yeah. Well, you know, you being walked in on right. by your kids, you walking in on your kid, or grandma walking in on you solo. I still believe that ruined our relationship. Oh. For and on out, we were never the same. Yeah, I think grandma's worse. Yeah, it was the worst. Because she's going to go talk to your parents. I don't think she talked to anybody about it. She did a lot of rosary bead praying. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, because her generation thinks that, oh, that's not a thing to do. No. So then she's there's her favorite apple of her eye grandson, and yep. he's going to hell in a handbasket. Uh-huh. I was going there quick. Yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. Yeah, that you hand were. was in the handbasket, yeah. DJ. You, you really were getting there fast. Very apparent. Damn. Oh. Oh. I, I have a question. There's a new survey that says that one out of six people who own AirPods say they leave them in during sex. <laughs> They're AirPods, yeah, which are the, I mean, basically the wireless headphones. You know, that Joe Rogan podcast is long. I got to finish it at some point. That's a good point. <laughs> you know what? Multitasking. <laughs> I just assume they keep them in for everything. I, I see people wearing them You're right. all of the time. And I don't think that they're even playing music some of the time. They just keep them in there because they don't want to store them anywhere else. And it's like a status thing. They want to show up that they have their yeah. AirPods. Mm, look at me. I'm so fancy. Yeah. I think, I don't, I've never been a fan of how they look. I didn't know that that's a status thing. No. I have AirPods. I should actually put them in. Yeah. I think they, 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 it's like almost like a humble brag. Oh, wow. It's and just it, like when uh, people were wearing Beats, the headphones, yeah. a couple years ago. It's oh, the yeah. same thing. Oh, I got to start wearing mine. I didn't know that people would think <laughs> like I'm a guy. You rock the AirPods with your new BJ Make socks. Man, people are going to think you're the coolest dude in the world. <laughs> Yep. Boy, you know, somehow I don't think you're serious, but I'm going to try it anyway, Steve, okay. to prove you wrong. <laughs> Survey also found out that couples who have similar tastes in music have better sex and do it more often than couples who have different musical tastes. So you think they have the AirPods on and they're both listening to music? That'd like, be funny. Like, you're, hey, what are you digging? Oh, I want to listen to this. I'm not feeling that right now. I'll put on my AirPods. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would, I would hope that you kind of match in beats per minute. So that's can, a good point. Get that rhythm going. So you gotta, you gotta get staying alive. What's the other one you're supposed to use? Well, that's only if you're dying. Oh, I mean, if you're you can dying, to whatever oh. you want when you're banging. Oh, that doesn't work like when you're banging. Huh? Uh, uh, I mean, it sure it does. I feel like it should work. I'm doing it right now. Uh, uh, yeah, can you stop yeah, thrusting? Can you stop doing oh, that. Thanks. Sorry about that. Oh, awkward. Sorry about that. Mm, See, yeah. I never like. I don't know about you guys, but like the regular, not the AirPods, but the regular Apple headphones that they originally sent. Those ones would always fall out of my ears. So yep. I can't imagine that AirPods would stay in that much better. It they're seems the like same shape. But I see people working out with them on. That's that is amazing. Maybe so, we, we just have weird ears because my I can't put any of those any kind of pod things in my ears without them falling. Right, I have to have the over the the, the little uh, hook. Yeah, yeah. You need the hook. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, see, that's the training wheels. See, I don't know if that looks as good. I don't know if that's a good status. It says, oh, like my ears are... Well, what if they're like in the middle of a phone call? They got to keep them on while they're having sex. That's a good point, yeah. It, it seems like a very millennial thing. Got a big business meeting. Or what's the generation now 
Generation Z. Gen- Gen- it seems like a very Generation Z thing. Oh, so it's it's the real young kids. I mean, I see some people just walking around with headphones on all the time in the way. It's mm-hmm. like random way. Like just, uh, why are you wearing your headphones right now? I always thought it was so that they didn't have to be engaged. That could be. Yeah. I used to do that, so I can understand that. But it just seems like people do it all the time with these. All the time, like they they could be at Disneyland. They could be like eating dinner and they have like one headphone. And it's like, but they're still having a conversation. Yeah, I'm like, you don't need to be listening to music while you're eating dinner. I don't get it. They just need some kind of. It's like a sensory overload. They need at all times. Oh, gosh, even during sex. Mm-hmm. Well, I will tell you this: when you take one head, if I remember correctly, with the AirPods, if you take one out of your ear, it stops whatever you're listening to. So that, I don't think they're listening to anything, but it allows them. Wow. You put it back in your ear, and it picks right up where it goes. So maybe that's what they're doing, which is a cool feature. It's like if I if I I'm listening that. to something and you come up to me, I take the one I take one out, and it pauses my thing. Mm. Wow, I'm pretty sure that's what mine does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't have one. So yeah, right. I'll take your word for it. Why don't you come join the cool crowd, Steve? I, I got better things to waste my money on. <laughs> <laughs> really? Like wrestling t-shirts. Thank oh, you, yeah. Rav. I forgot Thank about you. that. There's a sale going on right now. Yeah, I forgot all, I forgot all about Someone that. bought the attachment hook for their AirPods, and it works great. Oh, wow. Okay. So just, just don't clean your ears. Let the wax hold the pods oh, in. Gross. Come on, work. guys. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I really want to talk to people who have the same taste in music to see if they really are having more sex because my wife and I do not have the same taste in music. Huh. And yeah. she lives in a different state. But so do, you yeah. listen to mu- <laughs> do you listen to music when you're banging? Well, remember I had my, I made that Yeah, mix. your boom boom mix. I made my boom boom mix. When you're boom booming? I figured we could agree on something. I thought, what do you think of this? Because I think that's important if you have, so this study is proving it. If you can at least like the same boom boom mix of a, <laughs> maybe that helps. Someone says, my boyfriend and I, we have a hump playlist. Every time we add a new song, we do the deed to it. Oh, we never what a listen great idea. Music. We never listen to any music. I'm yeah. just like, I'm like, why waste that energy trying to find a song? Like, let's just go. I'm the same it's way tough now. enough to find a movie that we agree on. <laughs> I even made a playlist and I don't even really use it, Steve. You're right. It's just like, hey, if this is the moment, you're, let's just do that. Let, 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 right. let me not try to get any in the mood because you're in the mood right now. By right. the time I get the candles, the like, time is now. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I can afford a couple seconds where I'm like, hey, you keep doing what you're doing. Let me just uh, go to my playlist. Oh, I, you're, you're fine. See, you're yeah. the one that, uh, at least as a guy, the guy doesn't want want to pass up an opportunity by because you know with some women if in two seconds the entire mood could change so it's like you know what i'm not gonna stop down for anything this is go time <laughs> i'm just imagining now bj being told it's go time and him trying to get the boom boom mix by just yelling for alexa and just <laughs> alexa play my boom boom mix and it not working and him just getting more and more frustrated and then kathy just being like sorry we're done exactly and then that really <laughs> old bad house techno song boom 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 let's go Back to my room. So yeah. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to hear that song. I need not my Avril Lavigne. <laughs> that may or may not have happened in my relationship. I and then the wife's turned off because you're yelling at the Alexa. <laughs> it happens, dude. I mean, I don't know. You I, would think, though, if you like, you know what music she likes or what song kind of, you know, is romantic for her, you could play it. And it's like, oh, hey. Oh, I mean, I, I'm adding just, to the vibe. I'm just saying, like Steve says, I'm not going to take time to go figure it out because the mood may go. Yeah. And you know, you're not like that, Vicky. It. You're probably, you, you can stay in the zone. But, you know, my wife, and I don't know if everyone was like this, but some, a lot, I mean, I've talked to other guys. Sometimes you go, okay. It's go time, and if you pause for anything, including like, do I go to the bathroom, or is it gonna, or is that gonna, it's gonna be too late when I get back, mm. and so then you have to perform under anxiety. See, I get anxious when there's no music. Like the ADD kicks in, and I'm focusing on everything that's not the sex. The music helps me get into the, okay. the sex. It's See, weird. But I get easily distracted by anything. So like if, really? if the music's going, I might be like, "Oh, this song's awesome, man! What a tragedy that man is dead now, though." And then I start thinking about those things, and it's oh. like, Ooh. "Oh, see, then you had a great life because we Gosh, always." I mean, I, wow. I can never distract myself, and I tried. Oh, when I was a younger man, I'm so easily distracted oh, with that kind of man, stuff. Man, I wanted that power. TV got that. That's got to go off. Oh yeah, no TV, oh, man. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, see I oh man, I envy you because there were moments where you just didn't want things to just get going, you know, you're in an embarrassing situation and the wind went the wrong way and next thing you know, whoa, and all of a sudden the troops are like, It's time to march. It's like, no, go back, go back to the barracks. See the TV one's a problem because whenever the commercials are going, I'm just like, oh that's yeah, you know, maybe I do need that product, you know. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. <laughs> it is. My oh, mind just keeps drifting. Dude. So I just like it. It's like quiet in the zone. Baby, you and Vicky, <laughs> you and Vicky are atypical because usually once a guy's in the zone, it takes a lot to get him out of the zone. And usually, I mean, a, a woman, if if you if you if you if you change the mood the wrong way, it's over. 
I feel like people put a lot of stress on making sex romantic and spontaneous. It's like, why yeah, don't, Danny. Why don't we just have like scheduled stuff? Or I think like I, some of the best sex I've had is when something funny happens, whether uh, a noise or something falls off, and you just start laughing. It's just it, it feels more intimate that way, and I feel like there's just so much pressure on making sex perfect. Vicky, mm-hmm. do you know that? I mean, usually it's the guy that would love to schedule any. Like, okay, we're gonna have sex every time this week. This is fantastic. You are like the only woman I have ever met in my life that says, "Oh yeah, I can make a schedule every Thursday at five o'clock." That I mean, my wife, I did that. I put a schedule in my calendar just to on my phone to remind me to go really connect with her, make eye contact. I was at a seminar, and she saw my phone go off and it would say, "Go connect." with Kathy and got pissed at me because you have to schedule to connect with me like you just don't do it naturally and you're the only woman I know that would actually appreciate that. I mean, some guys don't appreciate it, but it's what I got to do to my life. Yeah, I think it's very organized, which I think a lot of guys are. They're they're like, sure thing. I know every Friday at 6 o'clock, it's go time. No, I used to have my appointments. It was uh, Saturday (laughs) night at 2 a.m. Have you ever known any woman like that, Steve? No. No, she's one of a kind. She really is Uh, one of a kind. Yeah, you really are. first of a, and last of a dying breed. (laughs) Yeah, first and last of a dying breed. Thank you. I have a question. Why would a dad super glue his hands to his daughter's school you're gonna hear from this guy at 817 on the rock bj and mix mornings on the rock 99.9 kisw 99.9 kisw the rock of seattle a dad in england super glued his hands to the front gate of his daughter's school last week Because he was protesting her being sent home for having a piercing. (laughs) Why was she sent home for a piercing? Yeah, this is weird. And actually... Where was the piercing, I guess, is the the first question. It was in a regular place. It was a place called the tragus, which is um, the cartilage in front of your ear canal. Oh, I thought that's what Rev cooked his pulled pork on. (laughs) Oh, that's a Traeger. (laughs) Nice. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Close. Do not pierce his Traeger. He will not be happy. No! Kill you. Turns out this is also medicinal. So she wasn't even, this isn't even being done so she can look a certain way. She had these migraine headaches, and so they pierced the tragus in order to. Uh, really? Help, yeah, to help relieve the headaches. Yeah. yeah my, my, uh, when I used to get migraines all the time, they actually told my mom that she should, like, consider doing it, and I could just get, like, a flesh colored one. But I never actually had to do it. Huh. I never knew that. I never heard of such a thing, but how great is that if that's all it takes to p- help your migraines? I've seen a lot of my friends on Facebook get that piercing and said it's helped a lot. Isn't that this, amazing? This part, this thing? Yeah. Yeah, this little guy. The little, little, yeah. the little like, fin? Yeah, yeah the, the cartilage fin. Yes, yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> I heard that hurts really bad to get pierced, too. And any cartilage piercing it hurts, and it takes a minute to heal. It makes a lot of popping noise when you do it. Yeah. Oh. Yikes. Oh. Oh. No, thank you. Yeah, right. All right. But, but if, I had a, if I was dealing with whatever she was dealing with, and if that's what's going to fix it, sign me up. Yeah. 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 Get her done. And um, it, it, that's it, right, Larry. Yeah, get her done. <laughs> get her done. So this poor father, you know, he wants his daughter not to get migraines, and so she gets the piercing, goes to the school. They're not happy about it. They say that she can't be there with piercings, and even though it's medically necessary, apparently no piercings is the school policy. Here's the dad, a security guard busting him, and people checking out the dad's hands after the cops pulled him off the gate. Now I've uh, super glued myself to the gate, expanding for myself and I've chained myself. My daughter's got a legal right to an education. But I'm going to put myself through any pain so my daughter can live life without any pain. Stop the gate. This gate's going to cut me in half if it opens. I'm super glued to your gate. What, you are not stupid are Yeah, I'm totally insane, yeah. <laughs> Take your skin off. Yeah, the skin's there, look. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's have a look. Ooh, get down. <laughs> your skin's on there. Nice. Who's that nice. person? The masochist there. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And we're seeing pictures. I mean, this is, it's actually a flesh colored piercing and everything. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's, you have to really look to notice it. It's very innocuous. That's really insane. I, I, stupid I, I, rules. Yeah, the, that, that just to me, the, you know, how could they? I mean, I would imagine a note from a doctor would basically shut any school down. I mean, and, and I mean, I feel bad for the guy, and he definitely wants to help out his. But they, that's not the way you go about it, there, Skippy. You that's, know, you, you, that's why I don't go to their academy, which is called the Cockburn John Charles Academy. Excuse me. Uh, uh, you know, with a name like Cockburn, you think maybe he would have done something else to protest it. Maybe that's why they're on edge. Yeah, that could be. They have a tough enough time with the name of their school. Yeah, damn, dude. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's actually pronounced Coburn for a lot of people. No, probably. Yeah. How is it? Yeah. Well, it's not spelled I, that way, BJ. Yeah. I know it's not spelled that way. I think there was a, I think there's a John Coburn, a, a musician, but it's spelled like Cockburn, if I'm not mistaken. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. But we'd always say that. Oh. We used to say the same thing back in the day, and people would go, it's Coburn. <laughs> I love the one person that's like, you're an idiot. He's like, I know. Yeah. I know I'm an idiot, but, you know, this is all he knows how to do to basically, you know, like, protest the fact that his daughter can't get an education. Really, they are idiots. Now, he may, you know, they're all idiots in this situation. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's other ways you could go around this. Maybe, you know, have a meeting with the school. and Yeah, get the doctor note or something. It's just, but, yeah, you know, super gluing your hands to the gate. Oy. I mean, how, is that how he solves all of his problems? So yeah. I'm, I'm, that's it. I'm gluing myself to your school. And what does he do if he can't get a, you know, maybe he needs to get a vasectomy. What does he super glue his hands to at that point if they Yikes. turn that down? Well, he's going to the right school for that. Yeah, he sure is. <laughs> and the poor kid. I mean, she's already dealing with enough with the headaches. And now she's got dad who's, I mean, his heart's in the right place. Yeah. But now she's got to deal with being the daughter of the dad who super glued his hands to the gate. If you... See your dad do something like that because that's his solution. Like he really figured out this is the way to go about it. Do you just quit school and go? I I come from a line of stupidity. I'm not going to learn anything. I'm not going to be able to retain any information. It's boring though, because in this yeah. part of me, it's like that's so awesome that my dad has my back. I like that part of it. Yeah, you just wish my you know dad could you be a little brighter about it. Got cops in Florida. They got a call from McDonald's last week about something unusual happening. Uh, people reported that there was a naked guy outside doing a strange dance. And trying to have sex with a railing. At a McDonald's. Yeah. I just went to McDonald's like this weekend. I drove like uh, as soon as I got out of the the, the the hippie joint where all they served was vegetarian food. I went right for a cheeseburger. Nice. First, I mean. I went to a McDonald's this weekend too. Yeah. I mean, it was the first. I mean, it just goes to show you how McDonald's is. I would have. I, w- I wanted to try something else. I thought, oh, you know, I love it. But there, there wasn't any other restaurant. And I wanted a cheeseburger. So I'm like, I'm going to go to McDonald's. I just was going to have sex with the gate. Oh, is that what you were going for? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. good for you. Yeah, they had the best gates to have sex with at McDonald's. Yeah, how about you're the cops? You get there. Oh, and you recognize this idiot, uh, 63-year-old John Morgan. Uh, They've had issues with John Morgan in the past. Um, Witnesses told the cops it seemed like he was on drugs. Oh, you think? Hmm. Yeah. Not clear if he was or if the nudity, dancing, and sex with inanimate objects were all sober decisions. We don't know. But he was trying to have sex with a railing at the McDonald's. Is there something sexy about a McDonald's railing? Yes. That's where you put your all-beef patty and your special sauce. Oh, there we go. He got arrested, by the way, in case you're wondering. We had the weirdest McDonald's experience. Uh, we were in Portland, a few of us were uh, for Defy Wrestling. So we went there and then drove back that night. So I was driving and it was myself and uh, a couple of the other guys, one of the wrestlers as well. And like, we're starving. It's midnight. Like, let's just go stop at a McDonald's. It's some small town in Washington. I can't even remember which town. We get there. We're waiting in line, and we're just like, okay, come on already. Finally, we get to the to the box where you can make your order. And we're just like, about ready to order. And the lady goes, it's going to be five minutes until I take your order. What? And I was like, well, I've never heard that before. Oh, wow. Like, five minutes? we got to wait just to give you our order? And sure as that, so it was about four or five minutes. And she finally goes, okay, well, come to McDonald's. Can I take your order? And then we ordered, like, basic stuff, like a, a cheeseburger and some fries. And she's like, oh, I don't have that. We don't have that. We don't have that. And the guy, one of our guys, wants an apple pie. We don't have that. And like, so finally, I'm like, I'll just take a grilled chicken sandwich. Like, That's going to be a while until it's ready, though. I was like, wow. well, and so I'm like, well, what isn't going to take a while? She's like, actually, everything you ordered is going to take a while. <laughs> and I started laughing. I'm like, okay, this is just what's happening tonight. We pull up, and she just looked like she had, like, it was the worst night ever for this lady. So it was just like, you could just say, it was almost like this, like, give her a nod, like, I'm sorry you're dealing with this crap. So she had to be short staffed. It Sounds had to like be. Yeah, yeah. Something was going yeah. on. Oh, damn. I've dude. never had, I mean, we went through almost every item on their menu, <laughs> and it was being told no. Oh, that wow. sucks. That's nuts. We finally give our order. We pay. We get to the front thing. To, you know, it's the two windows. Get to the next window. And that lady goes, I already cleared off everything off the screen of what you ordered. What did you order again? Oh, no. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, oh, I wow. bet you that one woman is just dealing with all the newbies. 
Like it was like late shift, oh. new guys, yeah, screwing everything up. It was a super late shift thing. Yeah, <laughs> I think oh, so. Damn. Then we get our bag, and and in the bag is stuff that we ordered that they said they didn't even have. What? It was just such a <laughs> the, the, the entire experience was weird. Somebody was high. You know what? You're probably right. They Somebody was high. This was a super small town in Washington. Yeah. Somebody was high. Well, we benefited. We got a couple of McChicken sandwiches oh, out of the deal. Oh, good for you, buddy. <laughs> They're just like, here, throw everything in there. We don't know what's theirs. Right. <laughs> yeah. I uh, would like to confirm that the uh, Dairy Queen uh, Dreamsicle Sunday's uh, ice cream is good. <laughs> just uh? to confirm that. Not once, but twice. The orange cream one? Yeah. Yeah. You went twice? Oh. Well, I went, as a, I went as a celebration as going to the hippie retreat. And then, of course, since I didn't have any sweet stuff, I had it as a celebration after the Wait, hippie retreat. Wait, hold on a second. And you told us that as soon as you were done with the hippie retreat that you ate all vegetables at. The first stop you made was at a gas station to get ding dongs. That's right. And then you also went and got ice cream. Well, now you have to understand that this was a very long trip home. Oh, okay. Yeah, this was a seven-hour ride. Oh. So I'm going to have more than just some ding-dongs from the beginning of a seven-hour ride for Fair sustenance. Enough. And so I had to have a burger. And, uh, and, and I mean, I, it's funny. I went into some places. I was in Salem, Oregon. Oregon. I went into a place where they had, like, and I was going to get all my, I wanted a sweet fix. It was like, because I knew I wasn't going to get anything for like five days. So I'm like, all right, Salem, Oregon. I came across this great cannoli shop. And I walked in. There's a guy hand making every stuff. Beautiful Italian pastries. There's only one other guy in there and me. This one of the guys getting his stuff. And I'm like, all right, I'd like to get something. He goes, I'll be right with you. Turns around and continues to bake stuff and make stuff. I'm waiting there for five minutes. He's not doing anything but making and baking stuff. And I'm. Maybe I'm, that's the thing where they have to make you wait five minutes to give an order when you're close to order. Yeah. I'm sitting there. And I'm just like. Okay, I'm. St- I don't understand what's happening here. He's just doing his own thing. There's somebody else in the back room because he he had talked to somebody else. Nobody waited on me, so I just walked out and went to the Starbucks. I thought, okay, I don't understand how you got a Starbucks right across the street from you. How do you not serve somebody that comes in with money who's ready to go? I don't understand that. I mean, the only thing I could guess would be if that particular dessert he was working on needed to be tended to right away because if it gets oh, too yeah. warm or something, it just messes the dough up. Well, you know what? But he, he should have communicated well, that. He lost Even, BJ's dough. But I mean, it's like, right? so I'm supposed to wait for like 10 minutes? It's like, well, then why are you open for any kind of business for like people to come in and have food if you're just going to make them stand? Because, you Ooh, know, I mean, maybe it's a front for something. It probably is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a big thought, drug lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't want to piss him off. But dude, yeah. this stuff on the case looks so good. I was so mad. You should have pulled a golden tate and took it. I should have, man. Yeah. I should have golden tated that whole thing. You're right, dude. <laughs> oh, man. I should have golden tated hey, that. Speaking, since we're talking about the stuff of the weekend in Oregon and stuff, can I give a shout? to a guy I don't know, his name DG on, on Instagram okay he, so I, I, before the show at Defy in Portland I was like I'm just hungry I'm gonna go somewhere and I walk, I was walking around I was like oh that burger place looks kinda cool but I was like in a weird sense in my head I'm like I kinda want one of those Beyond Meat burgers but I had no idea I was like maybe they sell them there I walk in there it's a fully vegan plant based burger place oh damn yeah, to that, I think it's like called like Next Level or something along those lines I, 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 but so they of course had the burger I was looking for and I'm just eating it by myself at the, at the front counter and this guy comes up he's like are you Steve Miggs I'm like yeah and he's like oh I'm a big fan I'm like Wait, how like you're in Portland apparently he was from Seattle he now oh. lives there he posted on his Instagram as well he says I listen to the BJ uh, every morning ever since uh, we moved I've been talking to, they've been talking about the Beyond Burger so he stopped at Next Level Burger to try one sitting at the counter with Steve Miggs from that show dude how trippy is that he goes there to try the burger we talk about and there you are eating that burger that had to trip him out he yes. had to be like this is nuts the guy that told me on the radio he loves this burger I go try it in Portland <laughs> I'm just and there, there he is in Portland <laughs> <laughs> like I'm following him I want to make sure you're going to eat that burger if I were that Guy, go to every city, find a place that has a meet, and just see if you and show up. And see if it happens. I wonder if Steve will be at this random you restaurant. Think it's Steve will come. Oh, I need to hire man. a bunch of other bald looking, weird looking dudes. <laughs> just follow him around everywhere he goes to eat. Hey, please, somebody come up to me. Chances are I will be eating a no name cake at the Mod Pizza that you're at. <laughs> so that, that's very possible. Oh, dude, one of the big wigs at Mod Pizza, he texted into the show. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently he says uh, he's uh, he works for their corporate department. Love to get us hooked up. 
with the mod with the no name case. Oh, dude! I you know listen, tell uh, whatever that guy's name is. I love Mod Pizza because they do a lot of good stuff. Like the the folks that started that company really have big hearts and want to help out folks. And so I, I'll do. I, I love them. I think they're great, great people because they make money, they do the business, but they also like to give back. They're really a cool company. You said if we ever want to quote unquote work a shift for fun or a fundraiser, yes. let oh, them know. Wow. Yes. Yes. They did. Oh, I did fired. In. Day one firing. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, this is for a fundraiser, not so you can fill your belly with, yeah. uh, was it the Caspian? Yeah. The one with the barbecue yes. sauce? Yes. <laughs> we so got to get somebody to call these guys. I would love to do something for Mod Pizza. I would love go. to be I would love to be involved with them in some way, shape, or form because they're such good people. They're listening. All right. Well, they're on to us. Well, we got, I have my people call their people. How's that? Ooh. Don't I sound like I'm a guy? Yeah, almost. All right. Well, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just going to have Danny call them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one right. Oil and egg yolk are the two main ingredients of what condiment? Mayonnaise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mayonnaise. 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 It sounded like out. a box of mayonnaise. Right. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You want a shot at beating Steve? <laughs> All right. Well, you got it. 206 421 Rock. We're playing Beat Mix at 847 on the Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another question from a listener. I'm getting my wages garnished. Can bankruptcy help with that? Absolutely. Uh, one of the big reasons people file bankruptcy is because they have a judgment or a lawsuit against them or their wages are getting garnished uh, and so they can't pay their bill, other regular ongoing bills. People sometimes think that you can't file bankruptcy once they have a judgment against them or once a garnishment start, has started, and that's not true. Filing bankruptcy will immediately stop any garnishment that you have going except for child support uh, and stop your creditors from continuing on with garnishments of your bank account, your wages, um, and in most cases will discharge that liability uh, through the bankruptcy process. And we can file a bankruptcy case uh, for you usually the day you come in. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. What if you could change a person's world one small moment at a time? A career in behavioral health can provide you with a wide range of options and also brings what many careers can't, a positive change in someone's day-to-day life. In Washington State, there is more demand than ever for careers in the areas of mental health, substance use disorder, prevention, treatment, and recovery. And with the Career in Behavioral Health Services, your education is continual, from certifications to college scholarships. There is a fulfilling career waiting for you that can make a positive impact on your life and in the lives of those around you. Discover educational and financial support options such as scholarships and lifelong learning opportunities while exploring the path that is right for you. Because making the small changes that have a big impact on other people's lives can change yours. Learn how at startyourpath.org.